Head up display, Wikipedia audio. A head up display or heads up display, also known as a HUD, is any transparent display that presents data without requiring users to look away from their usual viewpoints. The origin of the name stems from a pilot being able to view information with the head positioned up and looking forward, instead of angled down looking at lower instruments. A HUD also has the advantage that the pilot's eyes do not need to refocus to view the outside after looking at the optically nearer instruments. Although they were initially developed for military aviation, HUDs are now used in commercial aircraft, automobiles, and other applications. A typical HUD contains three primary components, a projector unit, a combiner, and a video generation computer. Overview The projection unit in a typical HUD is an optical collimator setup, a convex lens or concave mirror with a cathode ray tube light-emitting diode display, or liquid crystal display at its focus. This setup produces an image where the light is collimated, i.e. the focal point is perceived to be at infinity. The combiner is typically an angled flat piece of glass located directly in front of the viewer, that redirects the projected image from projector in such a way as to see the field of view and the projected infinity image at the same time. Combiners may have special coatings that reflect the monochromatic light projected onto it from the projector unit while allowing all other wavelengths of light to pass through. In some optical layouts combiners may also have a curved surface to refocus the image from the projector. First generation use a CRT to generate an image on a phosphor screen, having the disadvantage of the phosphor screen coating degrading over time. The majority of HUDs in operation today are of this type. Second generation use a solid state light source, for example LED, which is modulated by an LCD screen to display an image. These systems do not fade or require the high voltages of first-generation systems. These systems are on commercial aircraft, third-generation use optical waveguides to produce images directly in the combiner rather than use a projection system, fourth-generation use a scanning laser to display images and even video imagery on a clear transparent medium. The computer provides the interface between the HUD and the system slash data to be displayed and generates the imagery and symbology to be displayed by the projection unit. Other than fixed mounted HUD, there are also head mounted displays. Including helmet mounted displays, forms of HUD that features a display element that moves with the orientation of the user's head. Many modern fighters use both a HUD and HMD concurrently. The F-35 Lightning II was designed without a HUD, relying solely on the HMD, making it the first modern military fighter not to have a fixed HUD. HUDs are split into four generations reflecting the technology used to generate the images. Newer microdisplay imaging technologies are being introduced including liquid crystal display, liquid crystal on silicon, digital micromirrors, and organic light emitting diode. Field of view also FOV, indicates the angle, vertically as well as horizontally, subtended at the pilot's eye, that the combiner displays symbology in relation to the outside view. A narrow FOV means that the view through the combiner might include little additional information beyond the perimeters of the runway environment, whereas a wide FOV would allow a broader view. For aviation applications, the major benefit of a wide FOV is that an aircraft approaching the runway in a crosswind might still have the runway in view through the combiner, even though the aircraft is pointed well away from the runway threshold where a narrow FOV the runway would be off the edge of the combiner, out of the HUD's view. Because the human eyes are separated, each eye receives a different image. 
The HUD image is viewable by one or both eyes, depending on technical and budget limitations in the design process. Modern expectations are that both eyes view the same image, in other words a binocular field of view. Collimation The projected image is collimated which makes the light rays parallel. Because the light rays are parallel the lens of the human eye focuses on infinity to get a clear image. Collimated images on the HUD combiner are perceived as existing at or near optical infinity. This means that the pilot's eyes do not need to refocus to view the outside world and the HUD display, the image appears to be out there, overlaying the outside world. This feature is critical for effective HUDs, not having to refocus between HUD displayed symbolic information and the outside world onto which that information is overlaid is one of the main advantages of collimated HUDs. It gives HUD special consideration in safety critical and time critical manoeuvres, when the few seconds a pilot needs in order to refocus inside the cockpit, and then back outside, are very critical, for example, in the final stages of landing. Collimation is therefore a primary distinguishing feature of high performance HUDs and differentiates them from consumer quality systems that for example, simply reflect uncollimited information off a car's windshield, I box the optical collimator produces a cylinder of parallel light so the display can only be viewed while the viewer's eyes are somewhere within that cylinder, a three-dimensional area called the head motion box or eye box. Modern HUD eye boxes are usually about 5 lateral by 3 vertical by 6 longitudinal inches. This allows the viewer some freedom of head movement but movement too far up slash down left slash right will cause the display to vanish off the edge of the collimator and movement too far back will cause it to crop off around the edge. The pilot is able to view the entire display as long as one of the eyes is inside the eye box. Luminance slash contrast displays have adjustments in luminance and contrast to account for ambient lighting which can vary widely, boresight aircraft HUD components are very accurately aligned with the aircraft's three axes a process called boresighting so that displayed data conforms to reality typically with an accuracy of plus or minus 7.0 milliradians, and may vary across the HUD's FOV. In this case the word conform means, when an object is projected on the combiner and the actual object is visible, they will be aligned. This allows the display to show the pilot exactly where the artificial horizon is, as well as the aircraft's projected path with great accuracy. When enhanced vision is used, for example, the display of runway lights are aligned with the actual runway lights when the real lights become visible. Boresighting is done during the aircraft's building process and can also be performed in the field on many aircraft, scaling the displayed image, are scaled to present to the pilot a picture that overlays the outside world in an exact 1 colon 1 relationship. For example, objects that are 3 degrees below the horizon as viewed from the cockpit must appear at the 3 degree index on the HUD display. Compatibility HUD components are designed to be compatible with other avionics, displays, etc. HUDs evolved from the reflector sight, a pre-World War II parallax-free optical sight technology for military fighter aircraft. The gyro gun sight added a reticle that moved based on the speed and turn rate to solve the amount of lead needed to hit a target while maneuvering. During the early 1940s, the Telecommunications Research Establishment, in charge of UK radar development, found that Royal Air Force night fighter pilots were having a hard time reacting to the verbal instruction of the radar operator as they approached their targets. They experimented with the addition of a second radar display for the pilot but found they had trouble looking up from the lit screen into the dark sky in order to find the target. 
In October 1942 they had successfully combined the image from the radar tube with a projection from their standard GGSMK. Two gyro gun sight on a flat area of the windscreen, and later in the gun sight itself. A key upgrade was the move from the original AIMK. Four radar to the microwave frequency AIMK. Eight radar found on the de Havilland Mosquito Night Fighter. This set produced an artificial horizon that further eased head up flying. Boresight or waterline symbol is fixed on the display and shows where the nose of the aircraft is actually pointing. Flight path vector or velocity vector symbol shows where the aircraft is actually going, the sum of all forces acting on the aircraft. For example, if the aircraft is pitched up but is losing energy, then the FPV symbol will be below the horizon even though the boresight symbol is above the horizon. During approach and landing, a pilot can fly the approach by keeping the FPV symbol at the desired descent angle and touchdown point on the runway, acceleration indicator or energy cue typically to the left of the FPV symbol it is above it if the aircraft is accelerating, and below the FPV symbol if decelerating, angle of attack indicator shows the wing's angle relative to the airflow, often displayed as alpha dot, navigation data and symbols for approaches and landings, the flight guidance. Systems can provide visual cues based on navigation aids such as an instrument landing system or augmented global positioning system such as the wide area augmentation system. Typically this is a circle which fits inside the flight path vector symbol. Pilots can fly along the correct flight path by flying to the guidance cue. Types in 1955 the U.S. Navy's Office of Naval Research and Development did some research with a mock-up HUD concept unit along with a side-stick controller in an attempt to ease the pilot's burden flying modern jet aircraft and make the instrumentation less complicated during flight. While their research was never incorporated in any aircraft of that time, the crude HUD mock-up they built had all the features of today's modern HUD units. HUD technology was next advanced by the Royal Navy in the Buccaneer, the prototype of which first flew on April 30, 1958. The aircraft was designed to fly at very low altitudes at very high speeds and drop bombs in engagements lasting seconds. As such, there was no time for the pilot to look up from the instruments to a bomb site. This led to the concept of a strike site that would combine altitude, airspeed, and the gun slash bomb site into a single gun site like display. There was fierce competition between supporters of the new HUD design and supporters of the old electromechanical gun site, with the HUD being described as a radical, even foolhardy option. The Air Arm branch of the UK Ministry of Defence sponsored the development of a strike site. The Royal Aircraft Establishment designed the equipment and the earliest usage of the term head-up display can be traced to this time. Production units were built by Sintel, and the system was first integrated in 1958. The Sintel HUD business was taken over by Elliott Flight Automation and the Buccaneer HUD was manufactured and further developed, continuing up to a Mark III version with a total of 375 systems made, it was given a fit and forget title by the Royal Navy and it was still in service nearly 25 years later. B Systems, as successor to Elliott's via GEC Marconi Avionics, thus has a claim to the world's first head-up display in operational service. A similar version that replaced the bombing modes with missile attack modes was part of the AirPass HUD fit to the English Electric Lightning. In the United Kingdom, it was soon noted that pilots flying with the new gun sights were becoming better at piloting their aircraft. At this point, the HUD expanded its purpose beyond weapon aiming to general piloting. 
In the 1960s, French test pilot Gilbert Klopfstein created the first modern HUD and a standardized system of HUD symbols so that pilots would only have to learn one system and could more easily transition between aircraft. The modern HUD used an instrument flight rules approaches to landing was developed in 1975. Klopfstein pioneered HUD technology in military fighter jets and helicopters, aiming to centralize critical flight data within the pilot's field of vision. This approach sought to increase the pilot's scan efficiency and reduce task saturation and information overload. Use of HUDs then expanded beyond military aircraft. In the 1970s, the HUD was introduced to commercial aviation, and in 1988, the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme became the first production car with a head-up display. Until a few years ago, the Embra R-190, Saab 2000, Boeing 727, Boeing 737 to 300, 400, 500 and Boeing 737 new generation aircraft were the only commercial passenger aircraft available with HUDs. However, the technology is becoming more common with aircraft such as the Canadair RJ, Airbus A318 and several business jets featuring the displays. HUDs have become standard equipment on the Boeing 787. Furthermore, the Airbus A320, A330, A340 and A380 families are currently undergoing the certification process for a HUD. HUDs were also added to the Space Shuttle Orbiter. There are several factors that interplay in the design of a HUD. Generations History On aircraft avionics systems, HUDs typically operate from dual independent redundant computer systems. They receive input directly from the sensors aboard the aircraft and perform their own computations rather than receiving previously computed data from the flight computers. On other aircraft the HUD guidance computation for low visibility takeoff and low visibility approach comes from the same flight guidance computer that drives the autopilot. Computers are integrated with the aircraft's systems and allow connectivity onto several different data buses such as the Airink 429, Airink 629, and MIL STD 1553. Target designation indicator places a cue over an air or ground target, VC closing velocity with target, range to target, waypoint, etc. Weapon seeker or sensor line of sight shows where a seeker or sensor is pointing. Weapon status includes type and number of weapons selected, available, arming, etc. Design factors Aircraft Displayed data Military aircraft specific applications VTOL slash stole approaches and landings. Typical aircraft HUDs display airspeed, altitude, a horizon line, heading, turn slash bank and slip slash skid indicators. These instruments are the minimum required by 14 CFR Part 91. Other symbols and data are also available in some HUDs. Since being introduced on HUDs, both the FPV and acceleration symbols are becoming standard on head-down displays. The actual form of the FPV symbol on an HDD is not standardized but is usually a simple aircraft drawing, such as a circle with two short angled lines, and wings on the ends of the descending line. Keeping the FPV on the horizon allows the pilot to fly level turns in various angles of bank. Civil Aircraft Specific Applications In addition to the generic information described above, military applications include weapons system and sensor data such as During the 1980s, 
the military tested the use of HUDs in vertical takeoff and landings and short takeoff and landing aircraft. A HUD format was developed at NASA Ames Research Center to provide pilots of V-Stoll aircraft with complete flight guidance and control information for Category 3C terminal area flight operations. This includes a large variety of flight operations, from stole flights on land-based runways to VTOL operations on aircraft carriers. The principal features of this display format are the integration of the flight path and pursuit guidance information into a narrow field of view, easily assimilated by the pilot with a single glance, and the superposition of vertical and horizontal situation information. The display is a derivative of a successful design developed for conventional transport aircraft. The use of head-up displays allows commercial aircraft substantial flexibility in their operations. Systems have been approved which allow reduced visibility takeoffs and landings, as well as full Category 3A landings and rollouts. Studies have shown that the use of a HUD during landings decreases the lateral deviation from center line in all landing conditions, although the touchdown point along the center line is not changed. In more advanced systems, such as the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration labeled Enhanced Flight Vision System, a real-world visual image can be overlaid onto the combiner. Typically an infrared camera is installed in the nose of the aircraft to display a conformed image to the pilot. EVS Enhanced Vision System is an industry accepted term which the FAA decided not to use because the FAA believes could be confused with the system definition and operational concept found in 91.175 and in one EVS installation. The camera is actually installed at the top of the vertical stabilizer rather than as close as practical to the pilot's eye position. When used with a HUD however, the camera must be mounted as close as possible to the pilot's eye point as the image is expected to overlay the real world as the pilot looks through the combiner. Registration, or the accurate overlay of the EVS image with the real world image is one feature closely examined by authorities prior to approval of a HUD-based EVS. This is because of the importance of the HUD matching the real world. While the EVS display can greatly help, the FAA has only relaxed operating regulations so an aircraft with EVS can perform a Category I approach to Category II minimums. In all other cases the flight crew must comply with all unaided visual restrictions. To maneuver the aircraft using only the EVS below 100 feet above ground level. HUD systems are also being designed to display a synthetic vision system graphic image, which uses high precision navigation, attitude, altitude, and terrain databases to create realistic and intuitive views of the outside world. Enhanced Flight Vision Systems In the first SVS head-down image shown on the right, immediately visible indicators include the airspeed tape on the left, altitude tape on the right, and turn-slash-bank-slash-slip-slash-skid displays at the top center. The boresight symbol is in the center and directly below that is the flight path vector symbol. The horizon line is visible running across the display with a break at the center, and directly to the left are numbers at plus or minus 10 degrees with a short line at plus or minus 5 degrees which, along with the horizon line, show the pitch of the aircraft. Unlike this color depiction of SVS on a head-down primary flight display, the SVS displayed on a HUD is monochrome that is, typically, in shades of green. The image indicates a wings level aircraft. Airspeed is 140 knots, altitude is 9,450 feet, heading is 343 degrees. 
Close inspection of the image shows a small purple circle which is displaced from the flight path vector slightly to the lower right. This is the guidance cue coming from the flight guidance system. When stabilized on the approach, this purple symbol should be centered within the FPV. Synthetic Vision Systems The terrain is entirely computer generated from a high resolution terrain database. In some systems, the SVS will calculate the aircraft's current flight path, or possible flight path and then turn any obstructions red to alert the flight crew. Such a system might have helped prevent the crash of American Airlines Flight 965 into a mountain in December 1995. Tanks Automobiles Developmental-slash-experimental uses On the left side of the display is an SVS unique symbol, with the appearance of a purple, diminishing sideways ladder and which continues on the right of the display. The two lines define a tunnel in the sky. This symbol defines the desired trajectory of the aircraft in three dimensions. For example, if the pilot had selected an airport to the left, then this symbol would curve off to the left and down. If the pilot keeps the flight path vector alongside the trajectory symbol, the craft will fly the optimum path. This path would be based on information stored in the Flight Management Systems database and would show the FAA-approved approach for that airport. The tunnel in the sky can also greatly assist the pilot when more precise four-dimensional flying is required, such as the decreased vertical or horizontal clearance requirements of required navigation performance. Under such conditions the pilot is given a graphical depiction of where the aircraft should be and where it should be going rather than the pilot having to mentally integrate altitude, airspeed, heading, energy and longitude and latitude to correctly fly the aircraft. In mid-2017, the Israel Defense Forces will begin trials of Elbit S Iron Vision the world's first helmet-mounted head-up display for tanks. Israel's Elbit, which developed the helmet-mounted display system for the F-35, plans Iron Vision to use a number of externally mounted cameras to project the 360 degrees view of a tank's surroundings onto the helmet-mounted visors of its crew members. This allows the crew members to stay inside the tank without having to open the hatches to see outside. These displays are becoming increasingly available in production cars, and usually offer speedometer, tachometer, and navigation system displays. Night vision information is also displayed via HUD on certain automobiles. Add-on HUD systems also exist projecting the display onto a glass combiner mounted above or below the windshield. In 2012 Pioneer Corporation introduced a HUD navigation system that replaces the driver side sun visor and visually overlays animations of conditions ahead, a form of augmented reality. Developed by Pioneer Corporation, AR HUD became the first aftermarket automotive head-up display to use a direct-to-eye laser beam scanning method, also known as virtual retinal display. AR HUD's core technology involves a miniature laser beam scanning display developed by Microvision, Inc. Motorcycle helmet HUDs are also commercially available. Unity Electric City Car will replace the dashboard and replace it with a large HUD directly to display information directly on the windscreen. The purpose is to increase safety as the driver will not have to move his eyes out from the road to look at the speed or the GPS screen. HUDs have been proposed or are being experimentally developed for a number of other applications. In the military, a HUD can be used to overlay tactical information such as the output of a laser rangefinder or squad mate locations to infantrymen. 
A prototype HUD has also been developed that displays information on the inside of a swimmer's goggles or of a scuba diver's mask. HUD systems that project information directly onto the wearer's retina with a low-powered laser are also in experimentation.